Well, the weather for the whole of the south of England will continue as it has for the next few weeks. It's going to be hot and moist, with temperatures rising steadily as time goes on. There's a chance of steamy moments as we move into the... Ah, sod it. We never wanted to do this. We never wanted to be weathermen and women, making innuendos about hot atmospheres and drizzly countries. We didn't want to be child-friendly. We didn't want to bang on about being for over 18s only. We want to talk about our sexy adventures. We want to be lifestylers, leaping from bush to bush as we sail down the rivers of British sex clubs and mountains of crazy experiences. The cheeky purple mamba, the liquid silk pumped liberally into our hand, the rodeo classic brief harness complete with tantus curve, the enjoy pure one stainless steel dildo, the hot octopus digit, the ever so short messages on fab swingers, the sexy friends on Twitter, and the mighty vanilla alternative. With my best girly by my side, we'd swing, swing, swing. Get in the gym or to your car. Without advice, you could go far. We fuck things up and we make mistakes. We talk about our sexy dates. It's getting hard for this to Well, welcome back. We've got some special guests with us this time, Mrs. H, haven't we? Yes, we do. Am I allowed to say who they are? Uh, you can do. Now, the last time you introduced oh, them, because they've been on our show before, you couldn't remember I really their fucked names. It up, you right. did. So, you've got one shot, one opportunity. All right, Eminem, cool. <laughs> Would you capture it or are you going to let it slip? <laughs> I'm going to do my best to get it right. Okay. <clears throat> the little pictures I've drawn have really helped. Would it help if it went blam, 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 blam? What, like the eight mile? Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. It was yeah. good that you pointed that out. I did. Thank you. <laughs> All right. We have with us today Secret Stag and Secret Vixen. Hooray. Welcome, guys. Say hello. Hi. Hello. It's good to be back. Yeah. It's even better to have you back on the show. It feels like it's been far too long. It, it's been like... It's been 10 months, maybe? It's been 10 months, 10 months since months you looked at me. <laughs> I'm going to keep doing that the joke. Wor- yeah. The world is a changing and we... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's been a, a strange 10 months. But here you are, you're back again. So, we for, are. For uh, thank you for having us. us. Well, oh, no, no, you're very welcome. So, for people who don't know who they are, no, you're looking I, at me. I'm, I'm, okay, then I'll tell you. I know who they are. You know, that's marvelous. I do pictures. <laughs> Great. So, um, you, you may well know Secret Stag and Secret Vixen from Twitter. So, um, they are Secret underscore Stag and Secret underscore Vixen One. I guess the, the Vixen was already taken. Stole it and she doesn't do anything. It's a bot. <laughs> I, found, I found that person. It's a bot. She was very sad. <laughs> very sad. We'll find them. We'll find well, them. You won't because they're a bot. Oh. So <laughs> we shall go online and hunt them down virtually. Yeah. I, don't, I don't want to be one. It's too late now. It's oh, your image. Fine. Oh, <laughs> or maybe you could just look at it as like you're number one. Yeah. I'm number one. Yeah. yeah. So why try yeah. harder? Yeah, you're the best. There you go. Um, and they um, also produce a blog called SecretVixen.blog. See, this is why it was good for you to introduce them, because you had all these clever notes written down. Well, that was about it. That says much. I've, I've <laughs> sort of gone through everything that well, I've I written down. I also found out today that they like Cocoa Pops, so... Did you? There you go. Every day's a school day. Every day is a... <laughs> well, it is, literally. But a, like, would they rather curve. have a bowl of Cocoa Pops? <laughs> Other yeah. cereals are apparently available. Yes, but Cocoa Pops I mean, are I'm particularly shocked that great. Cocoa Pops is not the go-to breakfast for every adult. What's not to like about Cocoa Pops? Chocolatey. Chocolatey goodness in a pot in a bowl. It's not to like. Now low in sugar. It sounds largely unhealthy for breakfast, maybe. I me. quite liked frosted Lucky Charms. Oh really? Oh, oh, magically oh, delicious. I can feel my teeth melting at the thought. Yeah, of I'm it. a pop tart fan as well. Well, uh, that, that's so, definitely a breakfast food. Uh, it's not properly a breakfast food, though. Um, it's more of a diabetes ninja star. chat. <laughs> <laughs> and though, before before we kick off, I will I will reminisce on a story about frosted lucky charms. You have a story. I have about a story about this. So, lucky um, charms. When when I was a teenager, I used to have a, a best mate who, who'd come over, but he would always just he, he was one of those friends that would just rifle their way through your cupboards um, and would just yeah. help themselves. And it was just accepted that he would come over and People do that. People did that all the time, like back then. Exactly, and he would come over. And, and the 
one thing that I was very particular about was my cereal. I was like, because you, you couldn't get Frosted Lucky Charms this everywhere. This explains so much now about but why you label your cereal. He would just help himself. <laughs> so knowing that he was um, one day coming over, and this is sort of much later on in life when we, we were in our sort of late teens, I guess, and, and probably drinking at this stage, um, I, I decided, because I only had a few marshmallows left in the bottom of the packet, that I would fill it with some cat biscuits, <gasps> some what? like go cat. <laughs> And 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 put a good cupful of them in there because I knew he would just take them. And and oh my god, you monster! Lo and behold, sort of a couple of oh. hours later, after he he had a couple of drinks, but he poured himself some cereal. It was like nine o'clock in the evening. I don't know why he was having cereal, but he was being brazen and just going nom 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 nom, nom and digging into them. Did he fucking oh. notice though? No, he didn't. <laughs> he didn't fucking notice. Oh, you animal. <laughs> Oh my god! But I like it. You monster! This, I tell you what, his did hair. Did you tell him? His hair was so shiny afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> did you ever tell him what you did? I did. I told him afterwards, and he still didn't fucking stop taking food. Oh. He was a bit of a nightmare, but he was. This he is was, why you label your cereal. This is why. <laughs> Do you even really my... have a hang up about cereal? I yeah, well, I don't like things being taken from me. But you like well, we're never sharing our family. You share yeah. things, yeah. not yeah. cereal, apparently. That biscuits would be quite easy to hide in cocoa pops because they're brown. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, to our cat biscuit pops. <laughs> but don't give cocoa pops to cats because it's chocolate. I don't think it's good for them. Ah, uh, no. quite right. There we go. Other things on pet watch. So we don't quite well today. Wow, I have learned something about you today, <laughs> Mr. H. <laughs> good. I'm glad you have. never try and steal his cereal. Don't hate that fucking cocoa puff. <laughs> Oh, you'll get some tuna crunchies in there. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, so, God. guys, um, for those people who don't know you... Um, and for those people who haven't turned off now. Yeah, and, and haven't haven't <laughs> run away, um, can you give us a very quick little overview about what you guys do about your journey into non-monogamy? Okay, so we are a hot wife couple, um, which basically means that I get to go out and have fun um, whilst... Oh, I mean, I still have fun you in get, life. You have a different fun. <laughs> but Mr. St- old Stag um, just sort of gets to watch and enjoy yeah, the show in a way. Exactly. Now, there's massive, uh, massive sort of variation in the hot wife dynamic, isn't there? So there are some couples who the partner, they have a more like cuckold relationship. And in that type of relationship, the, the, the woman, would, the wife would have all the sexual power to choose who she plays with and when. Um, we have a more sort of balanced power relationship, so that means we, I will find men that I think you'll be attracted to, and we, you know, f- have adventures together. As so a you go off and play on your own, but we play together as well with uh, me watching or with me and them and you. It's lots of fun. <laughs> we're, we're still learning. We've been doing it what two and a half, two years now. Yeah, two years. Yeah, so we're still learning. There's still a lot to learn. So yeah, we don't profess to be sort of the experts. Absolutely, not. in it at all. But we make fuck ups like everyone else. Yeah, <laughs> and we we know that feeling very very well. I was going to say well. we know nothing about that. <laughs> <laughs> we have experienced the odd fuck up between us. So we've invited you guys onto the show because one, it's incredibly lovely to chat to you. Two, because you're delightful eye candy. And three, because you are our experts in this field. So no pressure. We're going to have a bunch of questions <laughs> oh <my God. laughs> to, to go through on this topic and. One of the reasons why we've called this the bed hoppers fac off or FAQ off <laughs> is because we get a lot of questions about a lot of different topics. And one of the things that continuously comes up, especially at the moment, is around hot wifing, around cuckolding, uh, around uh, stag and vixen scenarios. You um, told me it's because you're a lyrical genius and a pun master. It's true, but I also like the idea of, you know, asking <laughs> them stuff. So, you know, let's quickly mm. fast forward over this bit. Yeah. Um, so we've. By we, um, I've composed a set of questions to go through, some of which you've already started answering. But, okay. but I think it might help someone who's thinking about starting this or, or looking at exploring this sort of area. So, right, yeah. Okay, you ready? Mm. It's not a quick fire round. There are no points or prizes to be won. It's not a quiz. <sighs> For everyone you get right, Mrs. H will take off an item Excuse of Excuse me, I won one thing. <laughs> Shouldn't be difficult then. <laughs> <laughs> So, These rules will not run past me at the beginning. Okay, so you've mentioned um, stag and vixen, um, not just as your names, but as a concept, I guess. What's that all about? What's What would you say a stag and vixen are? Do you want to take this one? Um, well, before sort of embarking on this journey, as it, as it were, I had no idea what a stag or a vixen were, other than obviously their 
animal forms. Um, but yeah, so basically a vixen is the wife um, and then the stag is the husband. You make it sound like we can transform into animals. <laughs> like Expecto oh, Patronum. Oh, wow, that sounds amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I was going for visionaries. Oh. That's completely different. <laughs> 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 more sort of, wait my mind, they will be wrought. That's one of the... He knows, farms. he knows. <laughs> Go, go, go. Um, so, yeah, so you have the vixen, you have the stag, the husband, and then um, you have the bulls, who are the men that um, I get to sort of go off and play with. Exactly. I think the the stag and vixen side of things, um, I don't know where those terms came from. You know, I found them. I remember when I was first kind of looking into things on the internet, which is always a spotty place to start anyway when you're looking into fetishes. And, um yeah, I just found those terms, and basically it means the balanced power dynamic. So you would never play without me knowing about it, and I take a role in choosing who you play with, and I participate as well. So um, my understanding of of it all is, is evolving over time, but yeah, that's basically it. Yeah, so he makes a wonderful PA. Thank you. <laughs> I'm very good with that. I'm shit at organising other stuff. And you've put it in such a pretty pencil skirt as well. <laughs> there you go, you see. Even better when I bend over in it. It is. <laughs> it's a sight, it's a sight. So you mentioned bulls there. Uh, I just want to clarify for, for those who aren't so accented or um, uh, uh, in case it's not clear. It is bulls and not balls. Big balls. Balls. <laughs> as in, as in, like, no. as in uh, <laughs> I, I call them a herd. <laughs> My herd, yeah. A herd of men. That's um, nice. Yeah, her bull. I assume this has come from the fact that they like, you know, bull inseminating. Oh, God. That's where it's come from. <laughs> oh, that is. No, the term. You know what I mean? Like, we're going to get the bull in to, you know. I guess so, yeah, because you would bring a to, prize to bull in. the the, the Yeah, I suppose that's cow. Again, throwing down <laughs> educational Do you animal. Think, yeah. Do you think that's why they use the term vixen instead of cow? Because it just doesn't sell it. Does <laughs> it doesn't have the same image, does it? <laughs> Lovely udders, When though. you found out that the, the, the term vixen, that was almost the selling it point. It really was. She felt like a superhero. It was like, because when you say that, it? as a child, I used to, and I used to pretend to be a superhero, I was always used, used to play the vixen. Well, here we are. Thanks to Animals of Farthing Wood. Wow, oh my like God. a self-fulfilling prophecy. Yeah, I have the come. The vixen. My God. <laughs> Excellent. So in terms of um, terminology, so is this stag and vixen sort of scenario, is that hot wifing? Is there a difference between the two? Is that was hot wifing a catch-all term? Yeah, so hot wifing. So really the wife sharing kink um, is, is more cleanly split into sort of cuckolding and hot wifing. So um, the cuckold side of things, as I said, it's a more power is all with the, the wife she chooses her sexual liaisons, who, where, and when those things happen. And the male, the husband, takes gratification from sort of submitting his power to her. You know, he, the, he, I use, and so, and I should say then that the hot wife scenario is what we have, like a balanced dynamic. You know, we are equal partners in the fetish. I still get turned on by her, it's like being with other lovers. But I am not giving away my power in within our sexual relationship as well. Um, I, yeah, there isn't denial and um, sort of the stereotypical side of the cuckolding is the sort of the denial of the yeah. husbands, like you hear of the cages and things, um, mm. and that isn't us. But there are there are actually many crossovers as we've sort of been it's also getting great, to know yeah. people and sort of meeting similar people. We've actually found that there are it is understandable why the two do tend yeah. to get confused. Well, that was the thing. I used to put, I used to put it all on acts, you know. Chastity is an act that you associate with cuckolding is what I would think. And, you know, um, two, two male, female threesome is a hot wifing act. But actually now I see it more as power. It's all about power more. In As I said, in our relationship, it's the power shared, um, and despite the fact that I'm letting you have sexual um, excitement with other men, doesn't mean I don't have sex with you. But in a cock relationship, I or the male would be getting off on being beneath you. And does that make any sense? I feel I, like I I've got off, off, off beneath her. <laughs> <I'm> off, <yeah. laughs> 
I couldn't get that image out of my head. As soon as I said it, I was like, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's also a humiliation aspect to cuckolding from what yeah. I understand. Mm. And, and, and it, you're right, there is a power dynamic and the power all mm. shifts to one side and that. And I think that's what people enjoy if they're in that 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 world. Really? So we talked a bit about hot wifing cuckolding. So why do you do it? What's the what's in it for you? Where's the excitement and the sexiness? Well, for me, it's obvious, really, that I obviously get to go out and have fun with sort of lots of different men. Yeah. Um, I like that you said fun again. You're refusing to say the sex word. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> Quiet you. But it is. It's true. I mean, I've often said that I never really did the dating thing. Um, I sort of, I've always yeah. been very monogamous. I've always gone from one relationship straight into another. Serial monogamous. I really was. And so I sort of never did the whole dating thing. I never really, and even sort of my my partners in the past have always started off from a friendship place. So I mm. had, I really hadn't ever done like that sort of true blind date thing. So for me, it's so exciting to sort of get to go out on these dates with these guys yeah. who I've sort of met, who I've got no history with. Um, and not just the dating as well, like the building up to that as well, yeah. you know, flirting online. It's the anticipation. Yeah, messaging and stuff. And I get excited from that as well. I enjoy um, seeing my wife <laughs> having fun and enjoying herself and getting that sexual excitement. So our sex life actually is much better now, much stronger and healthier now than it was before we started all of this. But I, I understand that her being a hot wife allows her to experience a side of sexuality that she could not experience with me just because of the fact that we've been married almost 10 years and we've been together even longer and, um, yeah, but the fact we I can't I can't replicate the newness of her being with another lover, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Mm, that makes sense. Mm. Yeah. So do you think this whole sort of thing is accepted in the, the non monogamy community? Well, I hope so. You're not gonna just you're not gonna score this now. Is this a trick? <laughs> no, That's it's not no. it's so for us, I mean obviously we, we, we sit in one world and we're we're kind of very much in that I guess the swinging community. Yeah. Um, and very much about that sort of e equal opportunities for both of us. But we know the hot wife thing um, dynamic is not for us. Yeah. Personally. Mm. So have you encountered any problems through going through that or has it all been pretty much plain sailing? We've been incredibly fortunate yeah, that it has so. been really sort of plain sailing and I'm under no sort of illusion that that would always be the case. I mean, the whole reason for the blog um, and the sort of the Twitter handles was really because of it, I know that it won't be sort of socially acceptable that I, I mean I can't talk to my sort of closest mm. nearest and dearest about it because of even having sort of conversations with our friends about threesomes and sort of seeing some of the shock and horror that I've received from my friends at the thought of doing it I'm like oh okay I better not introduce <laughs> the fact that I sleep with other men yeah, thank you um, so that's why I sort of started with the blog was because I wanted to be able to sort of share my experiences for me really rather than necessarily an audience yeah um but it has it's been a w wonderful sort of the reactions that we have had and it has actually made us realize that there are a lot more people out there doing it mm. but unfortunately it is just sort of has to be under the radar yeah because it's sort of social taboo and things. i think yeah well and actually as well for the husband again you know we can't claim to have had massive experience in the swinging community but you know you, the idea that in a swinging relationship husband is getting something and the wife is getting something mm -hmm. i think a lot of people on the outside see the hot wifing dynamic is the wife is getting something but what's the man getting what's the husband getting and i think a lot of men who find they have this fantasy there is a lot of taboo around if they told someone about it this feeling of sort of emasculation and sort of well mm -hmm. why don't you want to fuck another woman as well what's the deal and i think that's sometimes why it is you are often sort of confused as being a cuckold because mm. if people don't understand why you yeah. would get sort of any gratification of seeing me with someone else. Well, they've obviously never seen you with someone else. <laughs> <laughs> I think the hot wifing thing is actually quite quite um, enjoying popularity, um, personally. I think it's um, people probably see it as something that's like, oh, I'd like to try that. We've certainly had a lot, yeah. a lot more interest um, and messages to us, hence why we're doing this whole mm. um, back mm. off thing. Mm. Um, you mean you don't talk to us? <laughs> <laughs> you know we only talk to you if we have a reason. Oh. <laughs> it's because we like seeing you. Oh, uh, it's like a roller coaster emotion. 
Strap in. So this this thing, is it just for wives? Are there cup queens? There are, yeah. Um, I don't know anywhere. I've, I've talked to a few people online, but yeah, cup queens are a thing, and that is a, a general reverse of the dynamic. Um, from what I can tell, it's not as prolific. I don't know if it's a thing hardwired into husbands sort of enjoying watching other men with their wives that comes more naturally to men than to women. I don't know. Um, it's definitely something's out there, but not something that we've not experienced. No, yet. if there are any cut queens listening, we'd love them to reach out to us mm. and chat to us. I have one. I have husbands? one talk to me once, and she said, "What would the?" She was asking what the t- terminology would be, what the stag eviction terminology mm. would be. And I didn't know. And I said, maybe, maybe she would be a a, a doe. I didn't know. So, <laughs> a female deer. Yeah, a doe. I didn't know. I didn't know. Hey, We're, uh, yeah, she's a doe. There you go. I've coined that term. Doe. <laughs> <laughs> I think we might need some more thinking. Or some more, some more work. It probably <laughs> exists out there. It's just, and uh, you know, everyone loves to, loves to sort of put themselves into, to, or at least try to organise the world around them as categories, if not put themselves mm. into those categories. Oh, absolutely, yeah. They always try to, and actually sometimes that can be, you know, counterproductive. You sort of, you, if you put, you say, we are this kink, I, I define myself as, as in this bracket. You know, there's a lot of grey area, a lot of movement. Yeah. You know, we mentioned the swinging thing, and we haven't had a lot of experience in that category. But we have had some experience. But yeah, we have, as a result of sort of... As a result of this, yeah. This lifestyle. It's it's an interesting one, and I think it's it's you know when you sort of go out into the world of Reddit and the world of Twitter and all those sort of social yeah. media sites, you certainly see a whole breadth of things that are going on. Um, but I think you're right that predominantly you tend to find that it's men letting their wives go out and well, sort mm-hmm. of agreeing with their wives to go out and do this sort of thing, rather than the reverse. But but you know yeah. it does exist, so I don't think it's like universally one thing and not the other. So one one of the big questions that we get, and we've had this three times in the last week. <laughs> Oh, wow. Three times, yeah. So um, whether that's a measure of something being popular, I really couldn't say. Maybe people are just bored. So, and they just want to like, get in touch. Maybe. It's just, I, and we tend to get them at like three in the morning. So clearly. <laughs> yeah. Just when your mind is ready for it. Yeah. just yeah. Well, I think it's when people have had a, 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 you know, they're in lockdown. They can't go anywhere. And their mind is going through stuff. And they're probably sat looking at porn. That's what I'm imagining. <laughs> Because you know yeah. the computer and the they email is the outlet, and they think in the bed hoppers, this is who we need to contact. <laughs> yes. Fountain of knowledge. <laughs> yes, us, <laughs> fountains of knowledge. So, how the hell do you get started in this world? I know it's a huge question, but it's how. That's where what do you we start? get asked a lot, isn't it? Oh gosh, yeah. Where do you start? And I think, I think you you touched on it, Mister H. When you were saying that the husbands almost always drive this and from all the husbands i've talked to all the couples we've talked to it's almost always the husband that drives this fantasy and there's almost a stigma that if it's the wife that's driving it there's a problem <laughs> that's what i found you know why would the wife want to do mm-hmm. it and force the husband to go through with it but either way it's nearly always the husband and for me i lived with either fantasy for sort of 10 years a long time before i'd talked to vixen and advice to get started well try to avoid just watching pornography. Now, this is mad because, you know, everyone loves pornography. <laughs> but <laughs> the stuff that's available on the internet about the cuckolding lifestyle is not always, one, not genuine. And it, it often paints everybody involved in it, the bull, the hot wife, the cuckold, the, the stag, in a very negative light, in my opinion. It's very, very um, false. And it's always a bit sort of sensationalised, isn't it? Yeah, it's very highly sensationalised. Of... Hang on, the are you re- trying to tell me that porn is sensationalised? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, 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 it's very... <laughs> very, very real, very real. Very and real. Um, for me, that was for a long time my only sort of uh, gateway into the, into it. What I needed to have done it, um, is l- you know, talk to people who are involved in the lifestyle, uh, listen to uh, some good blogs out there. Sorry, some good... Um, Podcast. podcasts that are out there some good read some good blogs and then ultimately the only thing you can do is talk to your partner about it we i've heard stories i know you've had stories as well about people leaving well what about your blog tell about your blog yeah people so a lot of people have now been sort of strategically Husband leaving 
my blog open on laptops and mm. tablets and things so that the wife stumbles across it. Um, and yeah, I, th- I think it's just, you've got to just take that leap of faith mm. and speak to your partner about it. Yeah. Um, it's a big risk because of course no one wants to ruin their marriage, you know, because I think for me anyway, and I'm sure for lots of other people in this, in this lifestyle it's love is the basis of it and your foundation you know I love my wife and I love seeing her so uh energized by the lifestyle so you don't want to mess that up and if you're not yet in a position to talk to them about it it can be a really worrying time you know how do I how do I do it how do I break the ice and the sad truth is you can try and play tricks and like leave (laughs) leave (laughs) my blog leave your blog open (laughs) leave the porn file like the four guys going to the wife or whatever I mean I was ultimately a... talking to the partner and just being honest about things is yeah you have easy. to obviously know the sort you need to understand the strength of your relationship I was actually asked only a couple of days ago um do I regret not sort of embarking on the lifestyle earlier and I actually said to them I think that we are in the the sort we're in a good place I think yeah. if it had if you had sort of raised it when you initially had the thought sort of what 10 years ago when we were sort of quite early on because, in our relationship yeah, I probably would have I wouldn't have necessarily gone about it in a sort of positive way I probably would have gone down that oh well you obviously don't love me you you obviously sort of you're not interested in having sex with me because you want me to go and have sex with other people um but I think actually where we are in our relationship we have been together for a long time we do know each other very well we know we knew that there was sort of that that strength yeah yeah I guess so have we answered the question I've actually (laughs) really never been chatting well I I, I think I think you have I think it's that getting started (laughs) the the most no 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 no. the the most important thing is having that conversation and I think trying to think through trying to understand what you're after is really important and i think you know we found when we started our whole adventure that actually we had you know it all comes back to having some really brave exciting conversations. conversations together but you know we, we we i remember and we've referred to it a few times on our show we went to this little italian restaurant um, one day and before we even talked about the lifestyle and we just had a few drinks because it's us and then just started <laughs> talking about sexy things that we were interested in Actually, the other people thing didn't really come up at that point because we weren't in that space where we were ready for that. But actually, a lot of fantasies that we had came up. But that conversation, it felt like you had to be really brave to have that, to, to put yeah, it out there. Yeah, a brave conversation, that's the yeah. way. Yeah. And it's, bless the poor waiters that are kind of delivering <laughs> us. Stuff because, you know, I think they recognised that we were in for a really good night. So. I don't think they ever expected to hear the words tentacle and porn in one sentence so many times. Why did you? I don't know which one of you brought up tentacle porn. That's, well, maybe I can guess. I don't I know. Think we can guess. Can you guess? <laughs> uh, take a guess. Go on. I think they're looking oh, at the no, wrong no. person. Oh, well, now I don't <laughs> want to guess. I don't want to guess now. No, they've caught my bluff. I'm going to have to go Mrs. H now. <laughs> now? <laughs> <laughs> So the person that brought up tentacle porn was <clears throat> me. There we go. Yes. <laughs> when I die, please delete my browser history. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> when you die, we're going on a full weekend at Bernie's sort of style adventure. Oh to, my god! To a swingers party, it's going to be amazing. But please destroy my. Oh, phone. I want to be there. That sounds wonderful. But kind of. Kind of like we need the police as well, but it'll be fun. Yeah, between us, we'll all make it work, quite literally. <laughs> so, well, to go back and quote uh, Mr. Stag there, everybody loves pornography. Yes. He said everybody. it. Yeah, <laughs> everybody. Not on our next T-shirt. There's a porn for everything. Yes, there, there really is. There really is. Absolutely. There really is. Even if you didn't know it was a thing, once you find it, uh, oh. <laughs> oh. Oh. So um, we were talking about how can you get started? So we've said a brave conversation is really important, Mm -hmm. knowing what you're after. And and I think a bit of research doesn't ever go astray, like you said. So listening to some, and we'll come to this at the end, but listening to podcasts, looking at blogs, reading stuff, reading books, whatever it might be, that helps, helps with that conversation. But it's also really useful to have that stuff I found on hand, because if you're having that chat with your partner, if you've got all these resources that you can share and they can arm themselves with it, they can yeah, explore yeah. To, to whether it's worth it or not, or whether. And that is actually exactly what sort of Stag did when he did have when he did sort of to pluck up the courage to have the conversation with me. Um, 
he then did sort of say, look, if you want to sort of have a, a read of it. And to begin with, I was a bit like, um, I just want to process everything that you've just said before mm-hmm. I start sort of reading other things. But then eventually when I sort of had some time to think about it, I did sort of pick up yeah. Um, uh, yeah. the pod. I mean, we'd had, some, we'd had some hot sex that night as well. Because we did, you, yeah. Yeah, the initial tell it, me telling you, I think it turned you on far more than you thought it was going I think that's when you realise, oh, hang on, actually, I think, I think, I think I'm safe. I think, I think we're onto something. <laughs> the unlocked level one. <laughs> I didn't run yeah. away screaming. Yeah. Was, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, but, oh, so the sad truth is I, there are couples that maybe a husband will have the fantasy and it may never come to fruition yeah. because the wife may not just be into that thing. And that's, that's something true. that needs to be accepted, yeah. That's true of every fantasy, though, isn't it? That it's always a risk, and yeah. in, in, you know, yeah. you put this out there, and you don't know how someone's going to react. But hopefully, if you've got a stable relationship and a solid relationship, Absolutely. someone's going to listen to you. And if that's not for for you as a couple, park it or put it aside, or talk through what you can do to to get as close to that as you can, or maybe yeah. revisit it. Maybe you give it time to to let your relationship develop and brew, and you know, bubble away, and then come back to it in a couple of years and see how you're feeling because. You know, I, I certainly know that if we'd have tried to do uh, swinging before the point at which we entered this lifestyle, we'd have just fucking collapsed. It would, it would have been like a car. Mm, like, if you think this is a car crash, it would have been an utter <laughs> car crash at that point. And, you know, younger <laughs> Mr. H. Yeah, I, I'd have been in tears, scrubbing myself with a scouring brush in the shower, crying, knowing me. So, <laughs> it's not that I'm over dramatic, it's just that I was very dramatic. So. <laughs> So one of the things that I, I, I want to also touch on, so that, you know, getting started is all that stuff. Um, what are the things that people need to look out for? What are the pitfalls? What could trip you up? Have you guys had any stumbling blocks that you thought, oh, I didn't think about that? Um, again, we have been so fortunate. I think the one thing we eventually did was that we sort of actually spoke about it too much. Yeah. And it got so to true, the yeah. point where I was like, can we actually have a different conversation we both sort of had that initial excitement where we were sort of talking about it and things. And then it sort of got, for me personally, it just got to a bit where I was like, okay, I just want to yeah. curb it for a little while. I just need to sort of actually process everything that's happened. We yeah. sort of, we dived in quite quickly and sort of started chatting to sort of potential, a potential ball and things. Yeah. And it was all a little bit too fast. Yeah. But also not just, not that it was too fast is that, you know, I'd had, as I said, many, many years of fantasizing and and a lot of that was quite dark times as well, you know, having to go through the mental side of having the fantasy not being able to talk about it. Suddenly, not only can you talk about it, you feel like she might be into it and the temptation to just make comments and ask her about it, it was too much. Because you're already there in your head, aren't you? You've, you you yeah. know where you are and, and she's only just found out about it and you're, yeah, yeah uh, it'd been a long game for you, but I was like, Whoa. yeah. And that's the thing, as you said, it's it's. Were you like been... a bullet a gate? <laughs> yeah, a gate at a ball. Yeah, it's being patient with each other and measuring your expectations mm. correctly, and and allowing your partner time to process and come back with their thoughts. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, the first time that we two had gone out for drinks um it was actually our wedding anniversary and we were sort of sat outside oh, in, in the beer garden having a lovely <laughs> drink um and we had at that point already had our sort of first experience with a good friend of mine um and then we started having the conversation well how are we going to sort of find like, more like how do we move on from here yeah do we move on and and two straight away we're like oh well let's join up to this sort of this dating app sort of thing and I was a bit like "Mm, okay slow down because if for me it was the fear of I don't know who this person is going to be Mm. I don't know anything about them again having never done blind dates or anything I was literally like I'm gonna get killed I'm being murdered (laughs) oh my goodness killed and murdered Exactly. Wow. Double kill. Double yeah, kill. It's yeah. quite double an escalation. De- you can yeah, join with the weekend the Bernie thing. <laughs> <laughs> so that would be good. Um, and so we sort of curved it. And then the next day, um, Stag sort of showed me our profile. I was like, whoa, okay. So in the course of 12 hours, you have signed us up. So I was I was furious. I'm not going to lie. I was really cross. Um, yeah, it was funny looking back on it. But it wasn't funny then. <laughs> but you, Do we call that the stag peed? <laughs> You're very good. But he'd already sort of started talking to a guy, and I was just not ready. Um, 
I mean, it literally, it only took me two days to sort of call off and then you sort of did show me the picture and I was like, okay, mm. I'm tempted. <laughs> but you do, you have to sort of make sure that your pace is matched. Yeah. That yes, for him, it had been a very long time, but for sort of, for me, it was yeah. all very, very new. It was sort of information overload as well. It was sort of all things I'd never even heard of. Yeah. Um, I mean, what else is things that we need to think about, like concerns, worries? I think you've got to make sure, for us personally, we've been lucky, but some other sort of um, stag vixen couples who we've spoken to, there has been the risk of the vixen sort of becoming too attached to bulls mm. um, and then actually it becoming a bit more than, yeah. sort because of, there's a re- it becomes a, almost a relationship. Yeah, but it should be said on top of this is that people who maybe are listening with a cuckold dynamic in their mind actually encourage that sort of thing and they want their partner to have serious, mm. serious emotional relationships with other men and they get gratification from that. So again, it is everyone to their own. It's about understanding where your dynamic is and what you want to have it. And what yeah. You want to have it. I mean, the way that you sort of yeah. try to protect us from sort of getting emotionally involved is that if he thought I was getting emotionally involved with a ball, he would present me with another Just send her another one. He's like, there you go. Meet this one. I was like, okay, yeah, new toy. Um, so yeah. that sort of, it almost became a yeah a sort of a tonic to make sure that we I yeah. didn't get emotionally involved. I think yeah. you know this whole non-monogamy lifestyle as a whole it is inherently comes with risk and not only you know is is the the, the typical sort of hey yeah. use protection type risk but also the relationship risk and it's kind of mitigating those conversations and and how you go through that that space to make sure that you protect your relationship to the dynamic that you're comfortable yeah. with i remember in our early days we were terrified that we were going to break something in our relationship and mm, yeah. we, uh to the point where i think i agree we over discuss things probably because we were fearful that our bubble mm. would be would be um you know under threat well so, i think you know we went to the the extreme but we weren't great people but we almost met with training bar bra couples as we call them because we there was like no worry of mrs h running off with that person there's no worry of me <laughs> running with them but it actually yeah. let us ex- like play in that dynamic to see how we felt mm. we, whilst trying to minimize the risk and trying to understand what the emotional um comeuppance would be for us and see how we how we felt oh yeah at all. and it's a real thing and it can be very Although it's a sexually a sexual high, back of your mind, sometimes I'm, I've watched her before, and she's fucked some very attractive men. <laughs> and I'm like, oh. and there is always that thing in the back of your mind, that idea that, oh gosh, I don't want to lead to this losing, uh, to, to me losing you. But then it comes back to that, yeah, making sure that there's that understanding between the two of us. And as you said, you know, it's going of, into it with an open mind and yeah and you almost have to sort of set yourself some ground rules in a way don't you like I agree. if for me personally i know that if i were to sort of feel like i was becoming too attached to a particular guy um i would have to sort of step back because you as, better. As, you, as great fun as it is i don't want it to sort of be detrimental to our relationship the whole yeah. reason we did this was to sort of have yeah. new experiences together yeah and, enhance what we have already and, yeah Okay, so we've talked a few about a few tips. One of the things I didn't think we've mentioned is actually the sites that you can go to. Where, where do you find uh, these people? So we, um, well, I should really hand over to you because you are very much my PA in this because I don't really deal with the sites. This I do. Now, like, uh, <laughs> Oracle or whatever she's called from Batman that sits there <laughs> typing at the computer, calling out the details. Basically, yeah. <laughs> Tight, you know, size. Um, I joined um an old friend finder aff and through there we were very very lucky and we met a number of men which you enjoy and we had lots of fun with and a good people and we actually still speak to a few of them now and have become quite friends don't we and um but the problem is um and later with uh, fab swingers as well we joined there it is a case of having to for lack of a better term like trawl through mm the people and Dick pics. yeah I had a couple's account and I would be contacted every day by a lot of people and I must say none of those people were actually people we ended up with I it was it was ended up with men I sought out myself and I initiated contact with um it isn't easy I think a lot of people perhaps are on those sites for the wrong reasons perhaps living out fantasies 
in the way in the only way they can kind of virtually and almost, you know living a fancy life but there are genuine people on those sites there are good people on those sites but it's about being patient about being measured with who you speak to and and also being um careful with how much and what you share with people you know i remember share over sharing but luckily it was the person who we're you're with straight away like we're still with now sharing face pics straight away with the person who we just met just because of sheer excitement now it could be that that person isn't who they say they are you know and all that but yeah and now we're on twitter so we've been very fortunate to meet a few people from there I probably wouldn't recommend Twitter as a go-to place for new people starting out. If you're looking for following, it. then then <laughs> then then check the field out and see how it pans out. Yeah, <laughs> not that we've done that whatsoever. <clears throat> <laughs> so, one of the things that we haven't talked about is the flip side of this: is that um, is is the bulls really? Um, now, obviously, these these tend to be single guys or guys that are allowed to play away from their partners because they could could be either. What are your tips for them? What should they keep in mind? So if they're messaging a couple and and they want to get with this delightful hot wife, this delightful vixen, what what's what should they do? I think the main thing is they need to remember that there is a husband involved. Yeah. Um. And actually, all the sort of the guys who we have met haven't been people who have sort of come direct to me. They've actually approached Stag first. Well, I've approached them. Yeah. Um. Because I tend to sort of ignore the messages that I sometimes get. Yeah. You've, 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 you've chatted to a point with people yourself, but that's, you've actually never got to a, to a sexual encounter with anyone that you've had a shared contact with, have you? No. It's always been people I have. Advice to them, be open to yourself, be understanding of our dynamic and be tr- honest about what they want out of it. Because there are balls who want to be involved in coupled relationships. Um, and there are balls who want to be involved in hot wife relationships and yeah just being honest about what they want and don't approach us with nonsense you know i get crazy stuff i get sent dick pics as well which is a joy <laughs> i get Sorry, dick pics. Yeah, like does your wife want to choke on this that oh, was the genuine one i had was i was like oh yes i'll send an uber around like, it's just, <laughs> it's just oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't be a plonker i've just got remember a naive the, question beings. i've yeah. got a naive question and you know, typically I'm quite naive about things. Um, do do bulls have like expectations about what they're going to get from an experience with a hot wife? That's a good question. Thank you. <laughs> Came from my head. You didn't write it down. <laughs> um, I think. Um, I think it very much depends on the bull. I mean, I've had um, some bulls who were very much. The, I was their first sort of experience with the hot wife, and then yeah. I have also. Um, being with some bulls who are very far more experienced than I am. Um, and I have to say that they've always been quite, um, I don't know, I think very much the ball, the ball was in actually tennis ball is very much in my court. I've always found that I've not come across one who's been sort of particularly pushy. They don't have that expectation that if they meet me, that we're going to sort of dive straight into bed um, yeah. with one another. I think there's, from from their point of view, a lot of bulls are excited by the fact that they're fucking your other man's wife. Mm. But some bulls, and those who perhaps are very good at what they do, for lack of a better term, you know, really experienced in the lifestyle, also enjoy the fact that they are performing in front of the husband as well, and they get off on the fact that they are having sex with the man's husband whilst he's there, or taking pictures, sending videos whilst to the husband. There's that power dynamic thing as well. Um, yeah, but I often think the life of a bull can be quite lonely because, you know, at the end of the day, the wife comes back to the husband and they go home together. And in your face, bull. The bull. Yeah, basically, yeah. The bull has to leave and they stay in the hotel room and it's, it's, yeah. It's not a life for everybody. So single men shouldn't just be jumping into the bull lifestyle. That's what I want to do. But. <laughs> I think, you know, it's interesting that it goes with the, the general single man dynamic, I think, is that what you're probably looking for is a level of respect, a level of involving the, the, the two of you rather than just going for the, for the, mm. for the wife. And I think there's also a level of politeness and, and respect that just, that just goes with any sort of humane contact that you have. With yeah. people. 
and and the less you have of that the less chance you know because if you're you know as, as a guy if you're if you're doing all the fab min as we call it you know just <laughs> someone sending shitty messages or jumping straight into yeah would you want to choke mm. on this you're just yeah, gonna I'll go bad. fuck off delete and you, yeah basically you, know, you don't even get past the flow chart no matter how good looking you might be and how big your penis might be, uh, yeah. you're probably just going to go straight into the deletion box. That kind of arrogance yeah. is not appealing. No. No, absolutely. And I think we've had to deal with that. Yeah, I think they've got to just remember that we are actually human beings at the end of the day. Um, and, I mean, I, I'm sure, surely they've never had a success. We're sort of starting a conversation off like that. But you never know. But, yeah, just remember that when you are sort of approaching someone to possibly have a meet with, that they are normal human beings, so don't just sort of actually start a conversation how you would start a conversation with a person in real life. <laughs> and I think the, the other thing, and, and we were talking about this uh, recently the other day with some people who run run a site, is actually uh, look at someone's profile, look at what they're interested in, because that's going to that's gonna actually show that you've paid attention to what they're after, what they want. And if you can demonstrate that that you can either fulfill those needs or you look you're interested in the same thing or you get the personality, you're gonna go much further than just sending a hey or hey suck on this or whatever it might be. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> which is which is useful. Um I'm conscious that we don't have that that much more time left to to complete the interview. So I've got one more little random question and then we'll we'll start wrapping up. So um this one's something that, that's cropped up a lot, I think, on, on Twitter recently. When it, it, it circulates again and again and again, especially within the hot wifing dynamic. Do you think there's a level of race play that comes into things? And what's, where, where does that come from? I know it's a big one to tackle. Oh, ooh, that's what she said. <laughs> the interracial element of hot wifing. Sort of yeah. Yeah. So definitely, if you look again back to the pornography side of things the interracial side of hot wifing and cuckolding is absolutely huge so huge in mm. fact that it is almost synonymous for some people and there are wives who we've actually met now yeah. we've been very fortunate to meet a few people out now who are like exclusively bbc you know big black <laughs> cock, yeah, hot yeah. wives not to do with and, the, the british broadcasting <laughs> no. that's what i I don't no, think they're in any way no. affiliated. I went expecting reruns of Black Adder. What the fuck was I? <laughs> that is the BBC we were referring to. Now, so yeah, if you go online, the the amount of interracial cockold porn, I would say probably far outweighs sort of the sort of yeah any other aspect of it. And there are wives we've been very fortunate to meet, lovely people who exclusively go down that road they only sleep um uh, only do lifestyle stuff with uh black men and that's their choice for a variety of reasons um but i know vixen you've actually had an experience now i have now experienced bbc well then you yeah Did you get a bunch? and how was that for you <laughs> It was like for for me personally, it was a it was great fun. It was a really lovely experience. A lot of people straight away when they sort of found out about it on Twitter were like acting as though it was some sort of big transformative oh, event yeah. for me. And they're like, oh, "Are you gonna? Is it now going to be exclusive BBC?" And I was like, "No." I was like, "For me, I I didn't have um, the sort of the encounter with him because of the colour of his skin. I actually found him really attractive. We got on really well." Yeah. Um, so no, I'm not an exclusive now. Sort so of thing. Channel Four and Channel Five and Sky are still available. Yeah, they oh, are. Yeah. I'm, I'm very <laughs> right. it's all broadcasts. All broadcasts. Say, it, it's one of the things that uh, within this lifestyle actually that makes me really uncomfortable, and I, I I kind of I get a little bit freaked out by it, by the sort of the the hardcore approach for just just BBC, and it's it's kind of I find it very very strange. Um, but I, you know, I don't want to go down the Ricky Gervais thing of you know, I don't see colour. It's not that. But you know, I, I we haven't got to... time for your monologues. No, but I, you know, <laughs> Mr H's final moment. But it's you know, I I struggle to see how we can treat people differently based on the, the, mm. their race and the, the colour. Yeah, I mean, I... if they're a good person, they're a good person. Oh you know? yeah, I think that part of our choices in terms of sexual bonds for you is always at the forefront, the other person. For the people we've talked to when we went to the, went to the States, 
and we talked to a man who was, you know, who's extremely experienced in this. And his opinions on this were very much based in sort of American culture and American identity, particularly race, particularly race identity. Yeah. And how I'm trying to think how to put it, how he did put it, the idea that the I don't know how I can put it. <laughs> Basically, basically that's sort of the taboo and the social stigma involved in interracial couples um, is still a massive impact on American culture today. According is that because to because the, the Americans uh, accept and acknowledge the fact that at some point they had slaves and the British completely and utterly hide it under the carpet? That's the rumour, yes. <laughs> but also, but, um, you know, and also a lot of um, women that I chat to really prefer black lovers just they actually prefer just the physical being with black lovers they collect you know there are you know what they say in terms about uh, prowess and size and i mean this is from what women i've chatted to online now i know you talked about not having a transformative experience for you yeah i mean we i didn't actively seek out i didn't think right you know what I want to try BBC. I did. It wasn't. It wasn't that I'd ever sort of said no to it beforehand. It was just I'd never had an opportunity yeah. to. Um, so for me personally, but yeah, yeah, it yeah. wasn't about oh, I, I, well, I want to be with a BBC. Yeah, but for me, I must say, you know, got, got to remember my kink is seeing her have these amazing experiences and seeing her sexually excited, and seeing this situation was something completely new and completely. It really, really was pretty amazing partly because the fact um the contrast of skin tones and things like that but mainly because the man involved was extremely experienced and really knew what he was doing as a bull for example like little things like when you were sucking his cock he would like move your hair and stuff so i could see you things like this like he was very aware of, of the you know dynamic. the trifecta yeah. that the three of us were involved in it you know and although you're that, that i'm watching I'm involved in that way, so he would be setting you up for certain positions and things. So it was for me, if that makes sense. Yeah. The but racial aspect it, yeah. of it, though, did add another dynamic. I can't lie and pretend it didn't for me. Again, the contrast of where – what was it, we put it? He said that you could really see where oh, yes. where he started and I ended or the other way yeah. around. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> can't remember. Yeah. Yeah. It was clearly he a was knockout sentence at the time. It was far smooth <laughs> enough. We were so British and shit. Like, we were awkwardly British. Yeah. Just going, oh, okay. You can see that penis up in there. <laughs> Basically. <laughs> Basically, that's what you could Can we get that on a T-shirt for you? What, what I liked is that you did a very sort of Mary Poppin, Burt sort of Step in time, step in time, kind of. Can we really see that penis up in there? there. So. <laughs> you are very Mary Poppins, aren't you? Practically <laughs> perfect. Yeah. The age, yeah. So, I mean, if you, there are lots of husbands out there who solely fantasize about the interracial side of things as well. I've had people talk to me. Now we've had this interracial experience together, and they fantasize about their wife solely with mm. black men. And, yeah. I don't know if I have psychoanalyze if i can psychoanalyze why i think you, I'm there. well I'm there. You, you know given the amount of time that we've got you've done a pretty good job in, in talking about it so <laughs> sorry no no it's, it's it's one of those things and i think you could spend hours just kind of going oh, yeah. over the the psychological history particularly in the states of kind of where this this dynamic has come from and, and bloggers far better than than i have have, uh, have spent countless times and books going over that that sort of stuff but it's mm. it's important to know that stuff is out there and and that this exists so don't be surprised if you type in hot wifing and the first bit of porn that you see is a is, mm. is a interracial it, featured piece of piece of film. yeah so I, I think it's important to have that in the back of your head not literally yeah, necessarily <laughs> yeah absolutely so well when... I'll, I'll just said next time she goes back to new york he's going to have a a team of people ready for you so that should be fun <laughs> Look on the face, said it all wow, I'm so glad we're doing this on a video I've chat because you have that. Yeah, <laughs> a team, like um, like a Formula One car change. Oh, Basically, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and there's I nothing sexier than Formula speed. One. Yeah. But I'm not going to lie, I'd quite like to see that. <laughs> <laughs> 
take a sip of my drink. Yeah, please do. Please and do. On that note, I think that nice segue. Yes, I think, I think we can we can wrap up now with, with, with the speed of Nigel Mansell amongst others. So, um, folks. Um, thank you ever so much for joining us. It's been an absolute pleasure chatting to you. And um, even though there have been technical difficulties in, in the middle of it, we enjoyed watching you run around like like um, very busy people trying to push oh, buttons. Is that sure we will put Benny Hill music, music over it. As well. <laughs> yeah. and if, I, if I can't find the Benny Hill track, yeah. it'll be keyboard cat. It's going to be one of the two. One so, of, yeah, absolutely. Oh, please. <laughs> Except it won't be him singing it. It will be. I write the theme tune, sing the theme tune. Um, so before we before we hang up and, and disappear, um, where can people find you again? Can you let us know? Um, so you can read my blog, and also Stag does um, occasionally um, <laughs> write some posts as well in his own time. Um, but you can find my blog. <laughs> <laughs> as he rudely gesticulates at me uh, but you can find my blog at secretvixen.blog uh, my twitter is secret was it secret <laughs> underscore vixen one and i'm one. At, one. at secret underscore stag no one no one <laughs> vixen at least you're still number one yeah Yay! precisely <laughs> I am the one and only. Oh my right. God, no one needs Chesney Hawks. Don't worry, we're not going to take that away from you. So <laughs> thank you very much, Secret Stag and Secret Vixen, for joining us today. Hopefully we've answered some questions for people that have been uh, interested in the hot wifing, cuckolding and um, Stag and Vixen scenarios. Mm. Uh, if you have any questions, don't fire them to us. Fire them to them, for they're far more knowledgeable than we are. And will get a um, winded answer. <laughs> well, it, it depends on who's answering because, you know, one of you takes a long time to reply. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, guys. Please take care. Bye. Bye. Oh, cunningly, what's happened is, in the, and I don't know if they can hear this or not, but they've managed to mute themselves whilst talking. So Rookie I'm going to provide some beautiful commentary. They Stag is pointing at the screen quite a lot. Vixen's <laughs> wiggling the the phone. Uh, there's some oh, there's some waving I going on. I think they on. might be yelling, the, but we can't they, hear them. They can't hear us. <laughs> so this is quite amusing. Are and they going to phone they, us? They look like they're messaging us. <laughs> and, uh, Get the crystal. He's pointing to his ears. I think it it's two words. Is it a book? Is it a film? This is quite amusing. How many syllables? Yeah, it's uh, got quite a few there. <laughs> Looking panicked, which is good. So <laughs> this is like the time we made is really big on the screen, isn't they're, it? They're both shrugging. This is this is delightful. Why didn't you tell us another anecdote from your serial killer past? <laughs> My serial killer past, <laughs> <laughs> which I am gonna dump you, Mister H, the serial killer. <laughs> <laughs> now she's holding her phone towards the screen. I don't think that's gonna do anything. So this is quite amusing. I'm hoping they can hear all of this because this is oh, it's just it's um, just gold wonderful. really. It's all it's all filler, no killer. <laughs> <laughs> and now they've hung up, which is which is rather good. So hopefully, uh, they will dial back in. So let's see what happens.